And after we finished the aria, the, the house fell in, and I know, I'm positive, my jaw went... <laughs> <laughs> I want to sing with you. And the other thing they would take away... One, two, three... They take away these... these uh, uh, mucus sound. With really pure, pure mucus sound. Mm. But if you cannot sit comfortably in the lower middle register and in the low register, forget it. Because you also have to put out sound while you're doing it. But it's it. negotiating the break that makes the difficulty. Absolutely. Because, I mean, I've, I've seen so many singers fall down in that repertory and also handle, which is the handle control, which is the same, same problem. Mm -hmm. It's getting in and out of the break of the chest voice and the, and the, the middle but voice. just that one figure that goes... Ah, 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 it's a, a, it's a murderous. killer. Well, of course, every, I suppose most people know nowadays that bel canto means beautiful singing. But of course, it's, it's only the beginning of it. The bel canto era began with the great singers in the middle of the seventh of the well, I suppose even the seventeenth century it starts to begin. But it, it flourished and blossomed in the middle of the eighteenth century, the, even the early part of the eighteenth century, when the great castrati were were at their their peak. These, of course, were the artificial male singers who had these extraordinarily powerful soprano and, and mezzo-soprano voices, which we don't have any more, I'm happy to say, rather. <laughs> Why don't you sing it again? Simarande? I'd love to, and very likely they'll do it in, in Sydney again, I think. But it's all, you know, the old schedule and the time, and yeah. when, when, when it's an opportune time and when it's not. Even before the brain, with anyway, from there, there is hearing. I am hearing one fraction before the note I am going to sing. Hear like Caruso means sing like Caruso. Uh -huh. Because, of course, if you hear one note project like that, you are going to do that note. But you have to hear the note. Then I learned an awful lot from Ricky about, about the style and just how to do it. And then, of course, uh, we got a lot of books on it, too. But I think mainly you don't learn that much from the books, do you? No, it's doing it, it's and it's, doing and it's it. studying music of the, the other music of the period you want to, to you want to sing. That's what helps you so much. Right, right. And so now, of course, after doing it for all these years, so much of it is just ingrained that it just sort of happens naturally. Bel canto became a high cult in the in the early nineteenth century, and of course, it's it's in a way remained this. It's 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 a style of singing. It's a, it's a it's a very elegant way of singing. It's a it's a way that's very hard to explain in words what it is. A, a concert of great singing of great singers can demonstrate it more than any any written word or any spoken word. It takes a lifetime to learn about. It, it takes a, a lifetime to even begin to to sing, well, sing the real bel canto. It's a, it's something that many people desire. Many people want it. Most people love it when they hear it. Very few people find out how to do it. To be a real tenor voice, if you don't uh, if you don't cover. F, F sharp, and G, you are not a real tenor. You can be a, a fantastic singer, but not a, a real tenor voice. In another way... Uh, 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 yeah, no, in another way, you make, you, you make that, that thing like that. Okay, you can do... Ah, it's a good sound, but it's white. It's not elegant. If you do... Ah, That sound sounds sound simple. Take probably ten years to make a sound like that. One of the most important things, of course, uh, is the legato singing. And, and how does one go about singing legato? You, you do this by, by joining the tones, uniting the tones. And we do this mainly by scales. A singer is an athlete. Generally. Generally. Half athlete, half artist. Generally. <laughs> no, no, but generally is an athlete. Generally is an athlete because we are... Push I mean, so Luciano, much. what what exercise do you do basically at home if you want that's to warm yourself? Just, just the same. Let me do yeah? the same. Yes, where do you want to start? Did I touch the F? Yes, 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 I know, yes, yes, I realized yes, yes, I did yes, open. Yes, yes, yes. I realized <laughs> I did open, it was an F. <laughs> you see, oh! 
I have a scale that I learned many years ago from my, my main teacher, mm -hmm. which is very good for um, mezzos or contraltos, which takes you down into your lower register mm -hmm. and then brings you back up without bringing up all that weight yes. from the low register. And that is just singing like this. Right, and you, and you and you, but you 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 can crescendo into that lower register for the effect, but you don't bring up that dangerous weight of the chest. And th things like that are essential. But so many singers, the minute they start learning, they want to sing Kejeli Damanina. They want to sound like Pavarotti. It's not possible, is it? I suppose the the heart of bel canto must be the the real cantilena, isn't it? The the long flowing melodies. Che faccio ad esempio con col vocalizzo e poi con le parole? Sì, sì, sì. Allora, for example, vocalize is. This is the, the legato line. Now we have to put the word and don't lose this legato. The voice is something with vibration, and more uh, longer the vibration are better it is. Keep going up, like like uh, I made all of the example of a jet who is going mm, without without Sustaining. make any <gasps> any any break at interruption. all. Interruption. Interruption. It takes more than, a, than an old piano played by somebody out of practice to demonstrate that. You have to hear it sung by the human voice, which is the most glorious of all instruments. I, I, I firmly believe that there's, there's no instrument in the world that can touch the human voice for communicating from one person to another. I was very fortunate when I was growing up that, that um, as far as my bel canto training was concerned, I had mother who, who helped me so much. She was taught by a pupil of, of Marchese and had at my disposal all the wonderful um, uh, books of vocalises, which I studied as a child. I heard her singing them and I just copied her. I didn't actually, I couldn't read music. I was three, four, five years old. My father uh, is still now, he has still now a beautiful tenor voice and... Uh, wonderful tenor voice. And he's closing uh, right in the, in the passaggio, like I would like to hear many young uh, singer or student of this day to do, just to, to, to make the voice grow and grow and grow more and more and, and come elegant and dark and uh, it was for me almost impossible to escape to that trap of my father because he brought home all the records of the greatest tenor of the past beginning with Caruso, uh, Gigli, Perti, Reschipa, Björling, uh, all of them, Tucker, everybody, Di, Di Stefano, Tagliavini, I, I, I hear all the, the bel, what we call the bel canto uh, tenor. It's strange that my path is somewhat similar to both of theirs in so much as that I had a parent, my father, who had a very beautiful tenor voice, and he, although he did not want to teach me himself, he was there guiding, watching, saying, you know, there is a natural placement there, don't let anybody fool around with a natural placement. And I started studying much too young, but at least he was watching over it. Uh, I started at five. And it's, it's a wild. Young, yeah. it's a, I just said it's a miracle I'm still singing. <laughs> but I think I began as a soprano because I began so damn young. Yes. Be who's got any chest voice at five years of age? <laughs> <laughs> and we have any chest at five years of age. <laughs> Alexandra, that's another thing. <laughs> and, and I can remember very clearly at about 15 years of age, I suddenly had another whole octave on the lower part of my voice. Very <laughs> much. 
something very, right, uh, very mm. much to the point there. Because here's a, an example of what we were talking about before. Not only is the legato exceptional, exceptional, it's wonderful legato, but you see, getting from the middle voice, which starts here, middle voice, to a very low note, which many singers would bash out on the yes. chest. I, for ja one. Jackie, show, show me how a certain oh, singer would I'm, sing I'm that. I'm a great basher. So show me how a bad <laughs> singer would sing that phrase. <laughs> But so, so it's but, one but, the but we listen to it all the time <laughs> yes. in the theatre. Yeah. Of, of course, bel canto, although it's beautiful singing, that doesn't mean just just singing beautiful long flowing phrases. It also means uh, doing all sorts of hair raising tricks. Bel canto also becomes, a, in in many ways, a great circus act because it, it, there are so many things which are of enormous difficulty to perform. <laughs> Joan always told me that when she was very young, she used to go into the gardens and, and imitate the birds, and she learned it till that way. Wonderful, because it was something that came easy and, and naturally. Jenny Lind, in, in her book on singing, gives very difficult exercises to, to learn the trills. She gives like this. Doing them very slowly on all tones. And then she says that if you do that for a year or two years, you may be able to learn the trill. I want to know, how did you learn the trill? I didn't read Jenny Lynn's book, but I decided that if I took two notes mm. very slowly and speeded them up, mm. then I would get my trill. Mm. And that, that's how it happened. Mm. Luciano, you, oh, I learned from the bird. A, you learned from the bird, too, yeah? <laughs> I learned from the bird. In fact, I can do... Perfect. <laughs> Another thing you can you have to learn to trill on the full tone and on the semitone, right. which is something that many singers don't understand about. Right. I mean, to trill on the full tone, it's darling, do it for me. <laughs> do on the full tone. Do us a beautiful messa de voce. In other words, a messa de voce start piano, a big crescendo, and a big decrescendo. Yeah. And, so, and many singers can do the first half, but they can't do the second half. You know that I once had a very famous Italian mezzo soprano tell me, now listen to this, that the, that the term messa di voce doesn't exist in Italian. She's right. Okay, so tell me messa, what... Messa di voce is position of voice. Okay, so what is this called? Mezza voce. No no. No no, 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 But they say uh, Mesa di Voce is written in the old Italian the old singing language. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, we, that, that Mesa Soprano then is talking about modern language, right. who is not, ex don't exist anymore, but it means something else, it means position, it means support, it means... Uh, messa. Mes messa di voce. Messa means... Messa means placing put, a put, voice. Put, put yeah, in place. Voice, put yeah. in place. And, and this is obviously an exercise to put the voice in place. You, will never, uh, place. you will never hear any critic who write down Messa di voce. <laughs> We often read in the newspapers about fioritura. I wonder, does, does everybody know exactly what fioritura means? It, it, in a, it's an Italian word, which means flowering. And, and uh, it, it means that a, a line of music, a, a melody, becomes decorated and, 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 and adorned. And, for example, if you take something like a little piece like Home Sweet Home. You, you can play that melody, which is dead simple. If a, a singer of, of the 19th century in singing that might well have sung. nature. There are, there are a hundred thousand ways to decorate. Should, should we show something uh, to, to explain what we mean? Um, what about the tanti palpiti? 
I could do like the first phrase and you know, do, do it bare and then bare. do it ornamented okay. just to show that yes, right. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay, now it comes back the reprise. Yeah. Even little, you, you, yeah. you even did not take much yeah. bigger than that. It brings up the same thing yeah. as the, the sonambula. Just sing with it, if you forget the word, sing with you. Canto is, is working at its fullest when the human voice is singing perfectly. It's something we all want, something we all desire, and it doesn't happen too often, but, but that is, then the, that is the only instrument which, which one wants to hear, really. <laughs> 